I am going to get us coffee because it's Monday and I need, I need something to help cope with what I'm about to do today and honestly for the rest of the week. But I thought, why not? We're going to start the week off on a really good foot and be super productive and have a lot of fun. It's currently a quarter to nine. It's Monday, the 17th of January. Yeah, let's do it. I feel, I feel like I'm happy a bit today, so we love that. Okay. Oh, my hair. It's fine, don't worry. <laughs> hey, mummy, where are we going again? South Melbourne. I need to drop off some taxi vouchers to one of my clients. Would you like to come for a drive? I don't have a choice, do I? <laughs> no, you don't. We won't be long, but it's quite urgent. It's urgent. So we're going to go to... South Melbourne again! <laughs> At least we got coffee this time, huh, Mum? Hey, friends. So, I'm in South Melbourne. <laughs> again. But I have my coffee and I have my book. So I thought I would take the time now to kind of give you an update with what I'm reading, what's the outlook for this week, and like the start of a new reading vlog. So let's do that. It's very awkward to do this in public. I'm not gonna lie, but it's fine, whatever. So this week is going to be, I think, a combination of just like week in my life, PhD and reading. And then you can tell me what you prefer. Really, this is all up to you. So what I'm reading this week, I actually have it in the back seat, but I can't bother grabbing it. So I'm reading two books. I started the second one last night and I started the one that's with me now, I think on Saturday. So. First book is Son of Sin by Omar Sakha, Sakia, Sakhir. I apologize. I, I need to look up how to pronounce his um, last name. But he's an Aussie author. He is a poet, and I'm really enjoying his work. And his, his, so he's an Aussie author, Aussie poet. And this book is I don't know if it's slightly speculative, but it's. A coming of age literary novel about a young queer uh, Muslim boy named Jamal and just exploring the intersections and the tensions between his identity as a queer boy, a queer man, but also with his religious identity being kind of a Muslim boy as well, a Muslim man. Young boy? Teenager? Anyway, but there's also a lot of imagery and like jinn and angels and so I'm not like too sure if that's a speculative thing or if it's just the way that Jamal is processing things. The writing is obviously poetic <laughs> like it's very there, there is a rhythm to it but I am finding it slightly difficult to uh, track the changes in timelines or even the changes in scenes i feel like it could have been a bit more seamless it just at the moment you get confused or i get confused maybe it's because i've been reading it at night and i'm super tired but it just feels a bit more not jagged but it just just confusing sometimes you're like wait where am i what timeline is this past or present that's the only criticism i really have it is a very intense book very emotionally intense trigger warnings for child abuse sa i think they're the main ones just like and like domestic violence as well just overall i'm honestly predicting that uh jamal it's gonna go a bit downhill for jamal a little bit he can't quite reconcile his queerness with his religion at the moment it's just really, really painful for him. So overall enjoying it. It, it very much it pairs well with my research. So maybe that's why it's also a bit more uh, challenging to read. But the other book that I started reading is A Farewell to Arms by Ernest Hemingway. This is my first Hemingway book. It's for the, it's the first book for like the Game of Tomes book club hosted by Emma from Emmy and Carolyn at Carolyn Marie Reads. So I started reading that last night. I'm only like 10 pages in, but I'm enjoying it. Liking the 
imagery, the description of the environment. I think it's very interesting. I don't know. I have no idea what to expect with Ernest Hemingway because I've never read Ernest Hemingway. But that's really all in terms of updates. Um, when I go home, I will figure out like what the actual fuck I'm doing in terms of my thesis. I need to work on my methodology chapter because last week was an utter fail. It was an utter fail. So bad. But it's fine. We have ups and downs. It's all good. And I'm going to sit here, continue reading Mum, Son of Sin and drink my coffee and wait for my mum who is dropping off what she needs to do with the client that she like manages the program for. So I really do like South Melbourne, but like it's a pretty nice area. There's a lot of trees, which I love. We are going to go on campus this week, I promise. Notwithstanding any sort of like <laughs> migraines or anything. If I get another migraine this week, I'm going to have to um, call out my specialist sooner than I anticipated just in case but the coffee's really nice a new barista made it this morning and it's quite nice it's not as milky which I actually kind of like This is really cute. I don't know for what, but like that's the most adorable thing ever. What's... Oh my god, no. Really? <laughs> Mum and I have very different tastes sometimes. Hey friends, it's actually a few hours later. Mum and I uh, went to the op shop. We went to South Melbourne, went to the op shop, and then I've been home doing work. But I wanted to show you what my mum got because it's books. So mum got one, two, three, four, five books, and they were two dollars each. So my mum, sometime last year, read I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings by Maya Angelou, and she loved it. She loved it so much. She's like, Alex, I really want to read this kind of entire autobiographical series by Maya Angelou. My mum loves Maya Angelou. She watched a lot of like interviews of her, and she just fell in love with the way that she spoke and like her philosophy of, in life and stuff. So she read this. She loved it. But it's kind of been on the back burner because mum's super busy, but also it's a lot of books and we just kind of forgot about them. But as you saw in the clip, I saw them at Vidya's. So these are all $2 and it's the entire series. We now have the entire series, I'm pretty sure. So mum got these for herself, which I was very proud. I am rubbing off on her. My mum is like a reading fiend now. She is always at least reading like two books. Obviously it takes a bit longer than I because she works. <laughs> but yeah, so she's really, really happy. She cannot wait. She's currently reading. I should get my mum to do like what I'm currently reading. She's currently reading... Uh, the, the Murmur of Bees by Sophia Segova, which I loved and read. 
she's really really loving that but she also just started spare by prince harry because she walked into the bookshop she's like i need to know the gossip it was really funny so that's the little book haul that my mum got so i haven't actually i haven't what was that worth i'm on a book buying ban these books weren't for me they're for my mum so i am still accomplishing my, my book buying ban anyway hi i am working on chapter three and i'm feeling a bit better today than i was feeling last week last week was just slump central wasn't it holy shit i've been editing that vlog and honestly it was a bad week i literally did nothing well i, I did do stuff i like submitted a chapter but still it's just mind-blowing but i feel better i feel different I feel good which is always important for these type of things so I'm working on the introduction of my methodology chapter, just like rewriting it, editing it, because I don't like the way I've written a lot of this, which is funny because I've passed three milestones and for two of that milestones, it was this chapter and it really hasn't changed and I got incredible feedback. So maybe I'm thinking, uh, maybe I'm like too much, maybe I'm too insecure. <laughs> but anyway, it's only actually working on that. I hate this chapter so much and I can't, I can't like see further than that. It's like this could be utter trash, but because I don't want to read it and because I don't, I don't want to work on it, I don't care. Anyway, I emailed my supervisors, my principal supervisor, just to like keep her updated even though she won't regularly be looking at her emails. She's amazing. I, I adore her. So I adore both of my supervisors actually. I'm really lucky. It's really lucky to get really good supervisors. But I just wanted to update my principal supervisor just to let her know that I am doing work, but things are a bit delayed. I shouldn't have I shouldn't have worked on the edits for chapter seven. I should have just went straight into this, but I was really in the chapter seven mo moment mind. It's just, you know. But yeah, we're a busy week and the possibilities are endless. And I'll keep you updated with my reading as well. I haven't read anything because I've been working. Da -da 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 -da. Bananas. So it is later on in the evening. <laughs> I kind of didn't vlog um, the rest of the afternoon, but it is around 9.30? Yes, 9.25. And I kind of wanted to give you a quick update. So after I came home, after I gave that update just before, I continued working on my chapter three I'm feeling really good about it. I actually edited two pages, so I'm feeling a lot better than I anticipated. This is terrible lighting. Sorry, my lamp gives off like practically nothing. Anyway, <laughs> so I continued doing that and then I switched over around about 4, 4.30 to edit a video and it was really fun. It was really fun. I enjoyed it and I've been in bed since like 7.30. <laughs> we're in bed early mum and I are in bed really really early because we just read and like watch movies or watch YouTube and like mum gets up early so it just makes sense but I've been sitting here reading Son of Sin and I'll show you because I didn't show you the book but this is the book how like absolutely gorgeous is it it's so beautiful and it's different textures so like this is quite smooth and this is like textured the snake. It's really, it's the, it's just so gorgeous. Oh my God. Really beautiful book. The cover illustrator, Amy Dowd. Dowd? Incredible. Amy, you're amazing. So I'm, I've been sitting here reading this. Can you imagine? So this book, it's a paperback. Cost me $30. $30. Australian prices, man. But anyway, so Jamal is now, we are now like a few years into the future and he is actually in Turkey visiting his father and it's just very sad. <laughs> That's how I would describe this. It's very melancholy and I really feel so much for Jamal and I feel like a lot of his experience would be relatable to a lot of people. And it talks about how, like, in Australia, Jamal is, like, too Arab. He's too brown. He's too Turkish. And 
I think he's Turkish and Lebanese. Yeah. And he, like, is, you know, not Australian enough, essentially. And then when he goes to Turkey, he doesn't understand the language. He is, like, he may look Turkish, but he isn't. But then that kind of pushes him out as well. So he's an outsider in Turkey and in Australia. So it's, it's really fucking sad. And Jamal is, like, not dealing very well with life which like valid <laughs> but it's yeah it's very emotionally intense but it's very very beautiful the language is gorgeous i think what was it i wanted to read out some things like i just mainly just one thing if it was one thing okay so just like two little quotes so the first one can you really love someone if you're able to leave them? <laughs> How gorgeous. Very simple, but very, like, bleak. I don't know. And then another one. Uh, Jamal is talking about how his dad was telling him... You know, Jamal, sorry, was talking to his dad about his grandmother. And I don't remember if I've told you, but Jamal's grandmother... It's only in a few scenes that she kills me. She's just so precious. And this is what Jamal said to his dad. And Jamal told him that his teta had passed away last year. That dementia stole her language so she couldn't speak. And ate her memories so she didn't know who she was. Maya Yar, my grandmother, had dementia, but she had Parkinson's, which hit her worse than the dementia, but because of her Parkinson's, it affected like her mouth and her ability to speak, and it fucking kills you, if you know what I mean, and so that, oh my god, really, really hit me. There's also this scene that I now just remembered where Jamal is talking to uh, a man, a boy that he met, Kassem, Kassem, Kassim, and Kassem, I think, about like the reason why he left university in his second year. And it's fucking horrible. And honestly, very much can see it happen in Australia. But it would just really emphasise this like culture of racism and, and a very... Like, they know that they're being racist. They know they're being racist. But they don't give a fuck. And how Jamal left because he felt like he hurt himself in the sense that he was complicit in doing something that was essentially mocking his people's oppression. And uh, he couldn't, like, live with that. And then Kassem asked asks Jamal and says, like, were you the only one that left because of that? And Jamal's like, yeah, which is just, ugh, loneliness is such a huge theme in this book. But I am enjoying it. It, like, it hits you hard, you know? And I did find out from Instagram that the author, like Omar, the author, has actually signed on with a firm press for a second novel, which is very exciting. And he hasn't said anything about like what the second novel's about. I hope he continues to um, center like queer folk in his novels. And I hope he continues to do so within the Australian context, because I think that queer people of color um, living in, like growing up, being Australian, living in Australia, like, there needs to be more, like, literature about that. So that's what I think. That's my two cents. But I'm going to continue reading this. I think we'll... I'll see if I can get to the next chapter. Actually, no. I'll get to the next part. And then, depending on how I feel, I will transition to my next book. 
which is this one. Oh my god, I have to tell you something about this. I know that this clip is 10 minutes long, but I got this second hand. This is the copy. It's absolutely beautiful. And it's like cloth, right? And I was like, oh, I wonder like when it was published. You know, like when was it published? 1936. And I didn't believe it. So I looked on like Ava Books, 1936. If that's true, this is so fucking old. And it's in such good condition. Anyway, I'm going to go read now and go to bed. And I'll most likely see you tomorrow. Hey everyone. You are in a very strange position. I wish I could show you <laughs> where you're propped up against. It's very funny. It's another day. I had a bit of a cute fun morning with my mum. She's had she has a day off today, that's why. But now I am back at work. We are here to do work. Today's gonna work on my methodology chapter. Having a good time, not really. I can't wait for this to be done. But at the same time I'm like just I just I hate this chapter you as you all know. I haven't really done much in the span of time that I've not spoken to you. I also would like to work a little bit on editing my next video as well as just doing some organizational things like my files in my OneDrive are absolutely atrocious. They're absolutely atrocious. So I've got to do that. So I am going to do that. Very boring but this week I do have a busy week I am going on campus on Friday which is most likely a definite thing I also might be going to Vic Market on the weekend on Saturday with my mum depending on how we feel and on Sunday I'm meeting a friend for like brunch so it's a very busy week outside of PhD stuff and hopefully I will finish a book at least one book who knows I'll keep you updated. Hey, so I just finished, sorry, Son of Sin, and I don't know what to think. I enjoy, like I enjoyed it as much as you can enjoy books that are this heavy and emotionally intense, but it was the, like, the issues that I had with it, mostly in terms of the flow of the story and the timelines because the character Jamal would like reminisce and if they're back and forth that really like, it could have been I don't know a bit more worked on a little bit am I making sense it was confusing at times and then I'd have to reread pages and again it could be because I'm reading this at night and I, my brain isn't all up to speed but that is I think my biggest criticism of Son of Sin Everything else is really beautiful. I feel like if you're not Australian, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if you would particularly understand the language used, like the dialogue. And I don't know because it is, it's it's very Aussie. I am definitely going to be looking out for more of this author's work. And I know that he's published poetry collections, so I'd be very interested in reading that. I apologize if this is shaky. I am naturally quite shaky, but yeah, I will, I think, talk more about it tomorrow if I remember what I want to say, but pretty good. Pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. And now I'm going to go to bed. <laughs> okay, bye. Ha, bitchy thought. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm reading this and I just wanted to quickly talk about some of my feelings this is a really terrible angle I just wanted to talk about some of my feelings and thoughts <sighs> um, I'm like 34 pages in it's a slow read which I fully expect it takes me a lot longer to read classics than it is to read other books my thoughts my first impressions it's very like it's a it's a really strange Strange is not a good word for it. It's like a very strange.
strange writing. Ernest Hemingway is quite dry, like the writing is quite dry, it feels very, I got up and washed my face, then I went down to the kitchen and made a coffee and then I looked out the window and I saw the guns and it's very like dry and very like this is what happened xyz um but at the same time it reminds me ever so slightly ever so slightly of jude the Obs of jude the obscure by thomas hardy in the sense because the only thomas hardy book i've read <laughs> but thomas hardy the way that he describes like scenes and stuff it's quite sensory and i feel like ernest hemingway is also quite sensory like he pays attention to like the scent of something to like the wind and to i don't know it just it feels sensory <laughs> the descriptions are a bit more like taking care to note different things but at the same time it's like wrapped up in this very straight to the point dry blunt writing i don't know it's a very interesting reading experience <laughs> like don't know if I'm enjoying it. I don't know. I really honestly don't know. But also there was this weird scene that I just read where, sorry, I'm like sweating. It's it's like 30 degrees tonight. There was this scene. So he's met the British nurse, Elizabeth. Elizabeth? Is her name? Did I just, Catherine. Oh my God. Why did I call her Elizabeth? It's Catherine. Oh my God. So the nurse Catherine, who's a British nurse that's working at the hospital in this like Italian um, countryside. The Italians are fighting the Austrians. The main character is an American who drives ambulances. So it's like the second or third, I don't know, uh, time that they've like been together, like just like talking and chit chatting and kind of getting to know each other or whatever. And he like he tries to kiss her and she like she slaps him because first of all it was really weird. It was just a very strange setup of a scene and I don't quite understand it. But she slapped him and he literally was like, yeah no. You had that right kind of thing it was very strange from what i understand from like the gist of the conversation because the conversation the dialogue sometimes also feels a bit strange it feels very oh, it feels very I don't know, again i keep on using strange that's the only way i can describe it it feels very strange but at the end of this entire scene she starts crying because of course she does Mind you, like, her fiancé of, like, eight years just died at the end. She's like, oh, you're, you're going to be sweet to me or you're going to, you're too sweet to me or something. And then she's like, oh, I would really love it if you were to kiss me now. It's like, oh, my God. And then it, like, describes how her mouth was closed tight in the kiss. I'm just like, I don't think she wants you, babe. <laughs> I don't think she wants you. Anyway, that's my thoughts. I am going to say something, though. Last night I didn't read Farewell to Arms. I am struggling to like, not struggling, I shouldn't say struggling, but I don't necessarily want to pick it up when I put it down. But I'm hoping that like things start moving, you know, eventually, because I'm really confused as to how this can be an entire book if it's just about this. <laughs> like, is the romance element going to be a main aspect of it? Is it going to be like a reflection on war? I also, I have to say, I, I am enjoying the way that Ernest Hemingway is portraying war because it's like, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a balance that he's depicting in that, like the horrors, terrors of war and like the uncertainty and also like the futility of it. But at the same time, just like the everyday nature of, of being in a war, like, yeah, like I get up and have a coffee, but then I go to the front, then I come back, like... <laughs> And I guess it's because the narrator is an ambulance driver, so he occupies a, a different space to like a a soldier who is in the trenches. It kind of feels like a bit of a, like a a root the routine, the routine nature of war. No, it's quite it's it is interesting. Anyway, good night. I go to bed now. Hopefully, I don't wake up in a puddle of my own fucking sweat. The dark, yes. Is it because I'm in a parking lot? Yes. So I'm back at a Westfield. <laughs> I'm meeting my friend uh, for coffee. 
quickly because I have to be on campus later on today. I don't know if I'll show you that because it's going to be a meeting and I'm literally going to be in and out. But anyway, I'm here and I'm here super early. <laughs> it's 9.30. I am meeting her at 11. Uh, I decided because of traffic and roadworks and shit that it would just be better for me to get out of the house as soon as possible. And then I can just go in to the Westfield, find a place to sit and do work instead of piss farting around this morning. So that's why I'm here. So I'm hoping to get at least an hour and a half of work done. Wish me luck. It's a really pretty Westfield, this one, I do have to admit. If you know Chadston, Chadston Shopping Centre, it's kind of like that. Y'all most likely, if you live in Melbourne, y'all most likely know which one I'm at. Um, it's around about 40 minutes from my place. It's Doncaster Westfield. I don't know why I'm being so secretive about it. But because it's Doncaster Westfield, there's like luxury brands here. Like there are areas of Doncaster that are really pretty and I might sit in one of those areas. Cause sometimes I do have just random tables and chairs. I'm hoping to find that. People are going in. So I am just gonna go and walk in and just plonk myself somewhere. But yeah, that's what I'm doing today. Then some of out of the house and then go to campus after this uh, and then I had to go past office works to pick up, what was it? Yellow ink, very specific. <laughs> past the library to drop off a book that I had for fucking ever but I had to pick up a book as well which we fucking love and I'm really excited about this this book is actually for a themed reading vlog that honestly won't happen for at least a month I slept so much holy shit it won't honestly happen for a month but I'm gonna start slowly slowly reading the books I'm really excited for it I have so many ideas so many ideas in my little brain, in my little, little bird brain. But I will show you the book because first of all, it is absolutely stunning. And it's also thicker than I anticipated for some reason. I thought this was a graphic novel. It's not, it just has pictures, but it is a novel. It's Slewfoot, Slewfoot by Brom. Look at this. Isn't she absolutely stunning? She is giving everything, I'm not going to lie, but even look at this. Sorry, the reflections are atrocious, <laughs> just saying <laughs> my degrees. But yeah, so this is actually a novel. Like, for some reason, I, I thought it was a graphic novel, but it, it's, it's a full on, it's a novel. But there has like some pictures in it and they're really creepy and cool. I am so excited! I have to stop myself from wanting to start this right now. No. No, 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 no. I'm not starting this right now. No. <laughs> no. But this is going to... I just realised her feet are hoops. I'm really excited. All I know is about witchcraft. Is it horror? I have no idea. I think it is. Folk horror. Well, of course it is! That's why I chose it. I'm such an idiot. That's a hint for the themed reading vlog. But I'm, I'm, oh, I'm so excited for this. I don't know what this is about. Should we find out together? Let's find out together. So, Connecticut, 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 1666, already. 666. An ancient spirit awakens in a dark wood. The wild folk call him father, slayer, protector, daddy. The colonists call him Slewfoot demon devil to abatha a recently widowed outcast alone and vulnerable in her pious village he is the only one she can turn to for help that is just so sweet together they ignite a battle between pagan and puritan one that threatens to destroy the entire village leaving nothing but ashes and bloodshed in its wake if it is a devil you seek then it is a devil you shall have i like low-key forgot to give you an update about my work so the update, I actually did quite a lot of work 
at Westfield. Um, I edited like five pages and I started writing just like a little addition that um, my supervisor said might be a good idea to include. Just like a brief few sentences um, kind of situating myself as like a writer and a researcher and like a student who is writing in context, you know, because things are still happening and the thesis is like being produced in context. So he thought that might be like a good idea. And I already kind of had that in my methodology, but he wanted it just to be a bit more slightly extrapolated a little bit. So that's what I'm, that's what I'm doing. And I'm really happy with my progress. Tomorrow I have all day to work on it and I'm, I'm just happy. I'm really excited. I also did a bit more reading of A Farewell to Arms by Ernest Hemingway Wells having my cappuccino. I think it's growing on me. I think. I still don't quite know because I can very easily read it, but I finish and I'm just like, am I, am I enjoying this or am I just reading it? I don't know yet. I'll let you know. I think I'm getting used to the rhythm of it. I feel like it's going to take at least like 50 more pages. I, with classics, I always give it to the 100 page mark. And then that's when I decide to DNF or not. Majority of the time, I don't DNF classics. I think Martin Chuzzlewit has been the only example in like the past year where I've DNF'd a classic because it takes, it builds momentum, it takes time. But I don't know, I don't know yet if I'm enjoying it or if, I don't know. I'll let you know, I'll, I'll continue updating you. But I've got to figure out if I'm going to continue doing work or do admin -y stuff. It's like already like four o'clock. I don't know. I feel like if that I could do at least an hour more work if I wanted to. Or I could read. I don't know. I don't know what to do. We shall say good morning. I got my period. <sighs> oh, I'm in so much pain. So I just took some Nurofen. I'm just going to sit here and wait until I until it hits and then i can start my actual day <sighs> at least i'm not crying but i do cry usually <laughs> i can't even think i can't even string words together but hi good morning how are you all today not having a great start not gonna lie but <laughs> after the neurofin hits i get up get dressed clean myself up fix myself up this is my uterus is very angry with me today but I'm going to clean up, get dressed, and then go into the office, and I'm going to continue working on my chapter. Yesterday actually went pretty well, so I'm going to finish out what I was doing yesterday, and then just like continue on. And tomorrow I'm going into the city campus, and I'll do some more work as well there. But before I do all that stuff, I'm going to wait. But I'll talk to you a little bit about a fair lot of arms, but I might not be as articulate. Am I ever articulate? Anyway, because I am in pain. Owie. So I actually read a fair bit last night. I read up to page 107, chapter 19. I think I'm enjoying it. You know how yesterday I was like, I'm not too sure if I'm enjoying it. I think I am. I think I'm gonna sit here and tell you that I am enjoying it. And I think it's because of the writing. I wanted to give you an example of, if I can find it, because I, I wanted to give you an example of, um, it feels like the way, like that way that he writes, because I keep on talking about it, but never really have given you like an example. So this is just an example of his writing. This is page 72, chapter 12. I'm going to read you a little bit of the first paragraph, or maybe the entire paragraph, <laughs> let's see. The room was long with windows on the right-hand side and a door at the far end that went into the dressing room. The row of beds that mine was in faced the windows and another row under the windows faced the wall. If you lay on your left side, you could see the dressing room door. There was another door at the far end that people sometimes came in by. If anyone were going to die, they put a screen around the bed so you could not see them die, but only the shoes and putties, I don't know that word, of doctors and men nurses showed under the bottom of the screen. And sometimes at the end, there would be whispering. Then the priest would come out from behind the screen and afterward, the men nurses would go back behind the screen to come out again, carrying the one who was dead 
with a blanket over him down the corridor between the beds and someone folded the screen and took it away. So it's, do you understand kind of when I said that there's like a bit of a rhythm to it? It just feels kind of like a diary where our main dude is like Henry, his name's Henry, is like just telling you what's happening. And so I'm, I'm getting used to the writing style and I think it's working quite well for this. I'm not gonna lie, I think the relationship he has with the nurse, Catherine, is a bit strange. <laughs> but I'm a cynic and I see red flags everywhere. But there was this um, part, sorry, this sentence. I'm like, this is either really romantic or a super red flag. <laughs> I'm, th I'm thinking in the context of the book, it's meant to be romantic. But Henry's been like, we should get married. And Catherine's like, why do we need to get married? They're going to like separate us because I can't be your, your nurse if we're married, I'm guessing. We're already technically married because they've committed themselves to each other. And Henry's like, well, I, I really only thought that like you would want it. So he was like, I only wanted to for you in order, like he's saying he only wanted to get married because he thought Catherine wanted it. And Catherine replies, there isn't any me. I'm you. Don't make up a separate me. And like, I'm guessing that's supposed to be quite romantic, but I just feel a bit icky about like giving up yourself, your sense of self for a man or your partner. I feel like, I don't know, I feel like I'm, I'm reading too, way too much into it, but I think in the context of this book, it's supposed to be romantic. It's supposed to show the commitment and the investment that both Catherine and Henry have in each other. But Henry hasn't really said anything along those lines. He actually lies a little bit, <laughs> which he openly says in the narration. So at least there's that. Henry's been um, injured, which I didn't really see coming. And so he's in Milan being looked after and Catherine's there with him like as his nurse. No one knows about them except for a few select people, but he's dealing with how boring and dull it is just to do nothing. But yeah, I'm interested to see how it goes. We have a fair, fair bit to go, but I'm enjoying it. Who would have thought? Not me. I am now going to go sit on the couch and cry. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually migrated back to bed because I'm in a lot of pain <laughs> and the Nurofen hasn't kicked in yet. So hopefully it will soon because I, I ugh, hate this. So I have my laptop in bed with me. Sorry if you hear like humming noises in the background. It's the little robot vacuum. I can't work in these conditions. Hello, it's voiceover me. <laughs> so I got this fairy loot package and I completely forgot that I pre-ordered a book and it finally came. Mind you, I've been waiting for months, but it's the um, sequel to The Atlas Six. It was The Atlas Paradox by Olivia Blake. So excited, as you can tell. I literally do not hide my emotions very well, but it's absolutely gorgeous. Look at the, oh, look at these pages and the end page. Oh my God, it's so beautiful. Holy shit. Oh my God, calm yourself down, babe. <laughs> But like the writing is super small. The same was this was the same as um, Atlas Six. Anyway, yep. <laughs> so I'm feeling much better. Excuse the hair. It's drying because I finally fucking washed it. I actually had not that bad of a day, other than you know, in bed crying with pain. But in between the pain, I also sent my supervisor. A message and I was like hey <laughs> can you read over my chapter like I'm at a roadblock I don't really know what to do from here uh, because I feel like I've edited this chapter so many times and I don't know if I'm missing something I need someone to tell me I honestly kind of had a productive ish day not super productive but productive enough and we're gonna take it we're actually going to say thank you for having a day that wasn't a huge write-off because it could have been but it wasn't so i'm taking that so honestly i'm kind of leaving the day 
ending the day on a quite a good note. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling like I did something, which is literally all I wanted. I read a bit more of a farewell to arms. According to Storygraph, I'm halfway through, but according to the book, when I physically hold it, it's not halfway through. <laughs> but I feel like I'm like 20 to 30 pages of being halfway through. I am enjoying it now. Like I'm gonna say that I'm enjoying it. I think the rhythm of his I'm gonna honestly repeat myself, but the rhythm of his writing, I'm getting into the groove of it. I'm feeling it. I'm enjoying myself. He's actually quite a readable author. He reminds me of Henry James. Oh my God. So, and honestly, yeah, my hair is a naughty mess. We're gonna ignore that together. He reminds me of Henry James. But see, I don't like Henry James writing. I find it to be a bit too dull. I read um, Washington Square and the Europeans, and I didn't like both of them. Actually, no, I think that's wrong of me to say. I think I gave them both three stars. Like, they were fine, not my favorite classics, but I found, like, parts that were enjoyable, blah, blah, blah. And it just hit me. So, I got really happy that I realized the comparison. But I'm, I'm enjoying Ernest Hemingway's writing. But I'm not enjoying, the one thing that I'm not enjoying is... Catherine. I find their relationship very strange. Not gonna lie. But it is Catherine. Catherine, Catherine, Catherine. I feel like we're supposed to think that this relationship is super romantic. And am I maybe just super cynical? Like I like parts of their relationship and I like some of the things that they say to each other I think are really gorgeous. But just like the way that Catherine always says, I've, I've been a good girl, haven't I? Babe, don't lose your entire identity. For a man who was perfectly willing to lie to you that he loved you because he wanted to, you know. And I don't know if, if I'm reading too much into it or if this is legitimately meant to be like a romantic story about these two people who found each other during war, right? So I really don't know, but in a turn of events that I was, I totally saw coming, she's pregnant and she's like, oh, like nothing will change. Like, don't worry, I'll be good. It's like, babe, it takes two to tango. It's also his fault and his problem, but he's going back to the front. I'm guessing she's also going back to the hospital. I feel like I might read a bit more because I am kind of invested in this story. Because again, I am enjoying it. It may not seem like it, but I am enjoying it. Um, I'm actually flying through it for a classic. Like, I'm really surprised, actually. Like, usually with classics, I read a bit every day. Because that's how I get through them slowly. It's just like read 20 to 30 pages a day and do it that way. Because sometimes they're quite dense. But Ernest Hemingway is quite readable. I'm finding him to be quite easily digestible, which is a good thing. Like there is a very a possibility, but a small possibility, but still a possibility that I might finish this book this week. But also tonight, I think I want to start a new book because I'm reading A Farewell to Arms, but I like reading classics alongside another book for funsies. So I think I might start another book tonight. I feel like knowing me, maybe I'll read Babel. Oh, I forgot to tell you. Night Bitch by Rachel Yoda, one of my favorite books of last year. Before I read Glory by No Violet Bulawayo, I think that was my favorite book of the year because I just really loved it. Really lots of, lots, lots, lots to love about it. I just thought it was just so fascinating. I got sent a link today by my friend Bess. Rachel Yoda is coming to Melbourne. <laughs> oh my god, it's so exciting. So I got tickets for myself and Bess. We're gonna go see, um, we're gonna go see Rachel Yoda. I'm so excited! And I think it's just a conversation about motherhood and identity. And I, I literally nearly cried, which wasn't hard today actually. I was on the precipice of crying all day, but I felt so good. I was so excited, so happy. Literally did not even think that this would ever happen, but it's in a, a few weeks, so.
I'm gonna go see Rachel Yoda. Hopefully she lets it slip if she's writing another book. I really hope she writes another book. I hope it comes out this year because I need more Rachel Yoda. That's something to look forward to. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna go now. I'm gonna go now. I'm gonna organize myself and I'm gonna go to bed and read. We are going to campus. We're going to the city today. It's a really great day, so hopefully I have a productive one. Is it true? How can I see you when you can't see me? for the lighting it is pretty sheer lighting <laughs> not gonna lie i am really tired it's four o'clock anyway i actually had a pretty good day in terms of productivity i started working on some edits for my methodology chapter because my supervisor who is amazing read through it quickly just to give me some guidance and i was working on that and then decided to have lunch and decided to come home it was good i'm just very tired <laughs> i'm just very tired <laughs> um but no i'm actually like really happy with my progress and so i think i'm gonna be working on my thesis this weekend um just so i can get ahead because i had a bit of a panic and i tried not to let it show because i was with a friend but i completely forgot that I have to submit my thesis draft to my supervisors in the first week of March. For some reason, I've always just had my just submission deadline, like sometime in April. And so it's just very weird. So like that kind of scared me and I'm trying not to panic, but the panic is beginning to set in. But it's okay, we've got we got this. I have to have this. It's four, well, technically three years of work. But in other news, I read a bit more of A Farewell to Arms by Ernest Hemingway. I actually read quite a lot on the train. I'm up to page 200, chapter 31. What just happened? I was on the train. I was on the train. I got to pet chapter 31, I put in my bookmark, I closed it, and I was just like... The like, last few chapters, I don't understand what just happened. It was the most action... I didn't expect for that to happen, and so I was kind of on my tippy toes, trying to figure out... It was, it was actually quite good. Not gonna lie, it was actually quite good, and I'm, I'm fully invested in the story. I want to know what happens next. This is like some of the quickest reading I've done of a classic. This book is surprising the ever loving shit out of me. Ever loving, ever living shit out of me. I can't even swear properly today. That's how tired I am. Being in the city, being like having to socialize. I feel exhausted. Oh my god, I forgot a conspiracy theory that I want to share with you. I literally just saw the annotation. So, when... This is chapter 16, page 95 for me. Catherine and Henry, Federico, Enrico, I don't know his name. He goes by... I don't understand his name. Pretty sure it's Henry. <laughs> They're together because Henry's like getting... Um, about to get his surgery this is when he was when he got injured and they 
I'm like getting ready because the day after is the surgery. So Catherine is his nurse. So Catherine spends like the night with him. So this is this is like that's just that's the scene, right? This is the sentence. That night a bat flew into the room through the open door that led onto the balcony through which we watched the night over the roofs of the town. Is that an omen? I literally wrote omen? Is that foreshadowing? What do we think? What do we think? I really want to finish this book before the vlog ends. Because I feel like that way I would have finished two books in this vlog. And then maybe I can answer whether that was an omen for you. But uh, I don't know how much I'm going to read tonight because honestly, it's for, for something. And I could very easily go to sleep. I am so exhausted. But that's that. We love... We are loving this right now. I'm actually really enjoying it. And I am starting a new book. I think I've decided. Or do I finish this? I technically started another book last night for two seconds. I literally read a page and then put it down and fell asleep. I fell asleep with my iPad on. With my my earbuds, my AirPods in my ears. I woke up at like 11 o'clock really confused. <laughs> like, what's that noise? It was YouTube. It was YouTube. It was still on in my ears. Uh, so I fell asleep with my iPad on. That's most likely what's going to happen again tonight. So that's basically it. I'm also really thirsty. So I better go and do that. I don't know where the clip... I don't know where the clip uh, of me telling you that I finished A Farewell to Arms went. It's disappeared. It's gone. I think I may have accidentally deleted it. But I finished A Farewell to Arms by Ernest Hemingway. And it was an omen. It definitely was an omen. I gave it three and a half stars and I really enjoyed it. I think it was a really in incredible introduction to Ernest Hemingway. If you have any uh, recommendations for an Ernest Hemingway book, please let me know. And if you've also stayed this long, kudos to you. I appreciate you. Please don't forget to subscribe and like. I can't believe I just said those words. And thanks for clicking on my face, friends. Have a lovely weekend. <laughs>